Hello and welcome back to StarCraft as today we're going to be showing off a relatively advanced but seemingly simple build order here uh, but it's one that I think a lot of you guys will enjoy because we're exploiting kind of a little physics engine exploit here something that really doesn't seem like it should work it's a little bit counterintuitive but suddenly will multiply the force of our unit so we're going to be spawning in the second position here and just like you'd expect from Swan we're not going to be going early we're going to be kind of saving up and uh, delaying as long as we can in order to get out our attack and a kind of swift late game technology punch. Well, kind of late game. It's it's technically tier 2. We don't have to get all the way up to tier 3 for this one. And it, it seems that we are going to be at least uh, facing off against a Tychus in their first position. Let's see, our next player here is an Abathur. Alright, so we've got a pretty pretty decent crew here. It's a uh, Rainer in our first position, myself, Swan in the second position, and an Abathur in the third position. And I will be facing off against an Artanis. Alright, and he started with Dragoons. Looks like they, they want to do a bit of an early game push. Uh, Dragoons, typically not a terrible start. Uh, they're kind of all-rounder, but it is a start that we will be able to punish pretty hard here with our attacks. Now, to give you guys a quick hint here, we are going to be going mass raids. Now, and you guys are thinking, but raids, they're really not all that great. You know, they're okay with, you know, just air superiority for against armored units. But you know what? They kind of don't have that much DPS as a whole, and you'd be right. But we have a little trick we can do to make up for that. So what I'm going to do is, I'm doing the same trick I did here with the Stalkers in the Voyager video. I'm just getting the upgrades while I can, without actually revealing that I'm going to be going for raids. I, I did get a Hellbat uh, partially so that we could try to contest the middle in case something like uh, this Tychus dies horribly and I could just walk across and claim the middle bonus for a little bit. Uh, and also to throw off my opponent so they think I'm going to be doing something like going grounds as we watch our El Hel El Hellbat die horribly here. And uh, th that's honestly, that's kind of the more more important factor. I want them to think that I'm going to be going for something that isn't raids because if they start preparing for raids then this whole investment, this whole waiting for a while is gonna gonna just be wasted. If what I want them to do is I want him to keep investing into into dragoons, into something that deals with say hellbats. That way, all of my rays can just come out and suddenly hard counter him. Uh, but unfortunately, as you guys will see here, I, I, I didn't mention this because I was in the middle of describing something, but. We're kind of having a really rough time here. Uh, the thing about Dragoons, they do a lot of damage, and we aren't exactly winning at all. And if I don't start putting down my Wraiths right now, I think we are just going to lose. So, unfortunately, they are forcing my hand, so I won't be able to get out a nice, a nice, uh, super hard-hitting bunch of Wraiths here, because if I don't put out anything this wave, I'm going, we're just going to die here. So I need to actually get these guys out. Now, these aren't going to do a whole lot. Oh yeah, look at that. Even the Dragoons, he even put the uh, the Guardian Shell on the Dragoons, so those are going to last even longer. So they're really trying very hard to get our bunker here. And uh, these raids are going to help out a little bit, even if not much. So I do want to get these guys out and just kind of trickle them out, which is not generally how you want to do this. You want to be able to get out all of them, like six or eight of them, all at once in one power swing, push across the map and deal a hefty amount of damage and maintain game control for the rest of the game. Uh, unfortunately, they're, they're not going to let us do that, so good on them. Now, let's see how they react to raids, because we have units from all three players all stacked up against this one, this one poor Rainer player, and that's, he's not going to, they're going to, they're going to, and just not going to make it at all. Yeah. Bye, Rainer player. You'll be not, not missed by anyone, I don't think, actually. Let's see how much damage we can get done here. Uh, the Dragoons will definitely clear us up, especially because we're fighting on top of their bunker. Or their, uh, their cannon, sorry. We have bunker, they have the cannon. Now we should be able to clean these guys up because we're invisible. Nope, they got an observer. Okay, so they did invest into an observer, so we're going to lose this, but we do will deal a significant amount of damage to it, and they won't be able to touch our our bunker ever again. At least not not in the near future, anyways, which is kind of kind of the point of me throwing these out earlier than I wanted them to. So, but in curses you ask, your raids aren't doing all that great, they just lost a bunch of Dragoons, which you said hard, just gotta super hard counter them and smash them. We haven't gotten there yet, I'm saving the last trick for a moment. The one little gimmick that makes this super strong, I'm kind of holding it off to see if we can get a little bit more power swing out of it. Uh, just do like one more spawn wave here. Yeah, just toss these guys down, let the wave spawn, and then fix these guys up, is actually part of a formation. We won't be putting them in a line. 
we will be putting them all very much so clumped up like this. And the reason why this makes a massive difference is that the Wraiths gain bonus damage based on their movement. Oh, ho, ho, yes, he's got Phoenixes. Okay, okay. So Phoenixes do not counter Wraiths. Phoenixes are light aircraft and they deal bonus to light aircraft. Now, Wraiths are armored aircraft and they deal bonus damage to armored aircraft. So they don't counter the Wraiths. And because our Wraiths are going to be very good units with a massive amount of DPS, uh, the Wraiths are gonna, just going to kind of wash over the Phoenixes. And if he keeps developing more Phoenixes, we're, gonna, we're just going to wash over him even harder. But I digress. The reason that this becomes super powerful is the Wraiths have a bonus ability. It is ability that gives them extra damage while moving. But you would think, but in Curses, don't they just walk up or fly up to their target and stop moving? Yes, yes they do. But there's a number of air units, especially the smaller air units like uh, Mutalisks and Wraiths for example, when they clump up because they all try to target the same thing, they will knock into each other, just kind of push each other around. And uh, when you have enough of them, what ends up happening is, let's say two of them collide, it'll push one of them out, and because there's so many of them stuck in an area, look at that, look at, look at all the bonus damage, look at all the red rockets flying out of them. And suddenly all those phoenixes just evaporated and just, just taking out the dragoons with it. Alright, so they, they, they finally cleared out enough, let me read this off here. Uh, it, it increases the damage of the Gemini missiles by 100% and burst lasers by 300% while the Wraith is moving. So as long as the Wraiths are all clumped up and constantly fighting for their position to shoot the same target, then they'll just be in a constant state of moving, as you guys saw right there, and they completely evaporated every last one of those phoenixes, wasn't even close, and as we get a couple more of them, we'll be able to do the same thing and keep up those numbers long enough to just wipe out the entire wave, or really anything in front of us, just like a single alpha strike, just fly straight over it, one shot the entire wave, and keep going forward. That is the idea here, and as you guys can see, it is starting to come to fruition. So much so that we wiped out enough of the wave that we're now sitting on their their cannon with tanks. Alright, let's go ahead and watch this happen once more. Look at that, there's hardly even a single shot going out that doesn't have that extra red aura on it. Now, as you guys can see, the, the difference for the burst lasers is they're just thicker. It's kind of hard to tell the difference, but you, you can tell just based on the way the Dragoons are evaporating. As it just goes from one side of the wave to the other. And then suddenly the, the damage just drops off as they, they're not, there's not enough of them to bunch up. And that's what makes this really super cool. It's a kind of counterintuitive uh, buff, boost. It's just suddenly the raids get more powerful for no apparent reason. At least uh, unless you really know the mechanics of StarCraft. But that is what we are here today to do, to show you guys how this works. Now, of course, there are counters to this. And honestly, I'm kind of concerned about Artanis because he's one of the harder counters to this. And that because we have to group up all of our units, at least all of our rays into a single clump, they can get bursted down really easy. Let's say something like Psionic Storm, which Artanis has in absolutely egregious amounts. Uh, things like the, uh, the Phoenix... Our ability combo with the Phoenix Dragoon unit and <laughs> Dragoon trying to run away with the Phoenix Dragoon unit and the uh, what is his name the Mojo Scout unit to burst down anything in the air. Yeah, we just we're just completely wiping over your tennis wave right here, and we might even get the we legitimately might even get the can. Oh, never mind, they unstacked, and with it went all of their damage. It took out the shield super fast, and then they unstacked, and all the damage went away. And most commanders have the ability to do this kind of air splash ability. There's very few commanders that don't. So there are counters to this. And this is one of the reasons why you want to hit super hard really quick to try to get a massive advantage and set their waves off kilter before they have an opportunity to do something about it. Because eventually they will be able to do something about it. Uh, should you go Hyperion? Um, this early? Probably not. But I mean, we are ahead and it looks like they're not going to be switching that around anytime soon. So I guess you could. Yeah, well, you're just gonna... Let's see, what do you have? You don't have much in the way of units, either. Eek. I mean, we can, we can carry him if we go to... Uh, yeah, let's, let's just tell him, sure. We, we can carry him if he goes to Hyperion. Alright. And um, let's see. We did wipe out the last of the Artanis wave, and we're gonna come back to help out with the Protoss wave. Now, I did notice that my... Abathur friend is having a hard time with these zealots. So this is really good that we managed to get the rays to, to go backwards to help out. 
Because while it's not, while my Abathur friend should have been building to deal with, are we just gonna take the cannon here? Oh, that was so close, guys. Oh, that was so close, guys. Uh, oh yeah, we'll get it here with the, with the stack and the siege saints coming up. We're just, we're just gonna punch through the tigers entirely, just just straight hammer him down and take the cannon. There we go. And that'll help out with getting all the things. Very good. Um, okay, so now I see something that's extraordinarily uh, concerning. And that is a storm. That means he has a High Templar in there. I didn't see the High Templar. Uh, it probably died, but it did get a storm off before it died. And that means that the next time we line this up, there's a good chance that one storm just kind of knocks out every one of my raids. And I've got a lot of raids and my entire... Well, literally, I'm, I'm all in on raids here if, if one storm knocks out my raids. Did you guys notice that he activated the Guardian Shield there before the wave started and my raids still wiped out the entire entire wave? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And now we're just going to... Look how much damage it did. Just the Alpha Strike just instantly brought it down. To, oh, wow. That is so much damage, guys. You see, this is, this is the thing about raids. They do a lot of work. Assuming that they're all bunched up in, an, in a state where they're getting 100% critical damage going the entire time. I'm not good at lining these up, boys. I'm so sorry. There we go. Uh, but obviously, they're, they're very easy to knock down. It's, it is a glass cannon type of build. So you want to hit hard and just kind of hope that you can take out the enemies before they get a, get a chance to reply. Um, I think I'm going to get stormed here. Uh, there's one storm. So it looks like the, the High Templar wasted all of their energy feedbacking my units. Uh, just make sure you're at tier 3. How do you say... Yeah, there we go. Close enough. And you... Saving up all of your, uh, what the supply drops. There we go. Lol. Okay, I think he's already tier 3. As you guys have no idea how many times. If someone asks you if you should go Hyperion, they're, they're not certain if they should go Hyperion. And if you're not certain you should go Hyperion, it's probably inexperienced. At least that is my experience with this. Because every time I've been asked if they should go, if someone should go Hyperion, tier 3, what? Or tier 4? Okay, that makes more sense. Every time I've had a teammate ask me if they should go for Hyperion, it's always like early in the game and they're like well maybe I should rush maybe I shouldn't rush now a good time to rush and they don't know whether and it's a good time or not to rush and then they start rushing it and they're always not tier three and they just die okay I think he figured out to stop uh, feedbacking my units so much and um, well there go my raids uh, so that was a uh, that's what I was worried about he's probably gotten a couple more high Templar in there and suddenly hurricane season is here and now I don't have a wave anymore I'm probably gonna have to start switching into ground for, uh, just, just to survive. That way I can at least have any amount of wave here. Uh, if there comes a moment where those storms don't hit all of my rays, then it, the rays will obviously, as you guys can see, be able to do a lot of damage. But oh boy, uh, let's just get some more uh, ground units here. I don't really have money right now. That's not good. Okay, well, we'll have to. We'll just have to wait one more wave and kind of hope we don't lose our bunker here. Because they're pushing onto our bunker. At least our raids should be able to clean up the Tychus, Tychus wave here pretty, pretty easily. Uh, nope, lost the bunker. Okay, that's unfortunate. Uh, but we will be cleaning up the Tychus wave. And unfortunately... Yeah, clean up everything. And uh, there's the hurricane season in full effect. Okay. Uh, well, there goes our entire wave. We definitely, needed, uh, definitely need ground units here. Now... If we could just do something as simple as... How many rays was that? That was 36 rays. If we can do something as simple as... Uh, wow, you see this High Templar blew away 36 rays, just like that. If we can do something as simple as just have the storms land on our ground units and not on our rays, just, you know, bait the, bait the storms out on something that isn't all of our grouped up rays, then we'll still be able to do that same kind of work that we were doing before the storm. But uh, we, we, need to, we need to have something on the ground. Now, of course, this does mean that we are far behind on the ground. As you guys can see, there are mortals walking across the field, and immortals tend to beat up everything that uh, Swan has available to him. Mostly because the only non-armored ground unit we have is going to be our Hellbats, and that's exactly why I'm getting Hellbats first, that way we can get something like Cyclones behind. The reason I want to get Cyclones is because we're going to be cleaning up this Tychus wave, and also Cyclones are good versus a lot of things like the Dragoons that we're going to be cleaning up. Oh gosh, all the storms. Actually, we didn't we didn't take that much damage from the storms. I think I think they got distracted hitting other things and didn't get to uh, coalesce. 
all of the firepower onto our rays. But nevertheless, we do need more ground units here. I'm going to put a couple cyclones behind it, to, to, first to clean up the Tychus, and then to clean up the, the Dragoons behind. Uh, cyclones, they just kind of deal a lot of damage. They're one of the higher DPS ground units available, at least to a, at least to Swan. Uh, just because of the, of the lock-on ability, it deals so much work. You can, you can keep it locked on in one of these like heroic Phoenix units. Yes, please. Okay, let's see. How is this going? Okay, Tychus is... That's a lot of storm out of Tychus. Yeah, that's not going to be good either. But at least the Tychus storms are super easy to bait, so it's going to be good. Yeah, the Hyperion is probably the only reason we're still alive right now. With those storms cleaning up my wave, my wave is practically not usable right now at all. It actually looks like there's not many storms landing on my rays at all. For whatever reason, the High Templar are deciding to feedback and not storm me. So my raids are just going to come clean this up anyways. You can look at all the extra bonus damage. You can, you can tell by the, the thickness of the laser beams coming out of the, out of the rays. And that'll, that'll help out a lot, but my raids will die horribly there because Phoenix just activated his AoE ability combo, and now I have no more rays. I mean, not Phoenix. Yeah, yes, I'm sorry. Phoenix is the name. What am I doing? Talendar for all of you campaign players. And nothing but a couple rays left. It doesn't... This is five rays. They do they do nothing in such small amounts. We need we need thirty six of them stacked up on top of each other, and then they just wipe everything out. All right. So once we get enough cyclones and enough ground forces, we should be able to actually assist on the ground, you know, just by baiting storms and having our raids survive long enough to deal damage, and also uh, cyclones that kind of do good work of, of themselves. So that'll that'll help out too. All right, let's go ahead and push across. Hyperion, not gonna lie, Hyperion was a good choice. He managed to survive long enough to have them... Yeah, no storms. Oh, but the Phoenix combo is here. Actually, I don't see the uh, Mojo Scout. Not that it matters, because Phoenix is this and just wiped out most of the entirety of the wave. I would say about half the wave. Uh, once he gets the second half of that combo consistently landing... I actually didn't see Mojo at all, so maybe I'm missing something? Hey, we brought it down to 50% life. Awesome. Yeah, if, once he gets out Mojo, I expect my, my, uh, the rest of my phoenixes, or uh, rest of my rays to disappear. So we need to keep continue investing into the ground forces here. Come on, one more cyclone. Yeah, got it. Okay. And are we going to win here? No, Jagoons are good here. Uh, conveniently, Storms also pretty much destroy my Zerg friend here. And the Dragoons should clean the rest of everything else up. Hyperion, not terribly good versus Mass Dragoon. Like, it's not bad, but Dragoons will take out the Hyperion. Yeah, especially because we're sitting on their base, we're not gonna- we're not gonna get it. not gonna get it this time. And then the Phoenix Wave arrives. Now, I wanna see- I don't see Mojo in there. But he's got scouts, so he's just saving up for Mojo. Okay. You don't even need Mojo, you just- you just have Phoenix. Just wiped out all of my all of my raids all at once. Well, welcome to Air Splash. Not not gonna lie, I, I do kind of like watching the raids just evaporate because it has this nice like black hole type effect, and just all of my raids just poof out of out of existence and in balls of fire as they fall to the ground. It's, it's kind of kind of satisfying to to watch. Uh, let's just keep investing in the ground here. We should we we should be able to overwhelm sooner than later. I'm not seeing any of my units survive for very long on the ground, which is not a big surprise. Uh, I really don't have that many ground units compared to my opponents here, and that's one of the things, is when you get s when you build this kind of all-in type of build, you're investing a lot into one unit, and when that one type of unit gets hard countered, your entire wave gets hard countered and pretty much invalidated. And uh, fortunately they don't have much in the way of Storm, but here comes the Guardian Shell again. And okay, now that Mojo just arrived, and... Uh, yeah, my raids just cease to exist. Okay, so they're going to push pretty hard here. Let's see how teammate manages to hold up. I do need to spend my resources here. Um, I need siege tanks. I need more damage. I need something to damage to actually... No, no. Uh, for damage, I'm going to need Thors. Uh, the Thors with the AoE stun and just straight single target damage should help out. Uh, I think I have a decent amount of just enough things in front to at least start dealing some more damage here. Because as you guys can tell, <laughs> they, the raids are not consistent. There, there are moments when the hard counters just land on the raids and then my wave evaporates and there are moments where they don't and my raids can actually deal some damage. I need something that can actually deal damage more consistently. 
Thors will be that option, especially because we can use their uh, grounds AoE stun to allow the Cyclones to keep up. Uh, looks like, actually, all the storms just landed on the left side of my wave, where all my ground units are, as opposed to the right side where all my raids are, so my raids are just gonna clean all of this up. We were talking about, and uh, now Phoenix is here. Yep. There go the raids. Okay, well, rip. Rip the dream. There we go. And we're still pushing pretty hard here. Teammate is using his AoE heal to keep all of his units alive. With Raynor coming in. I'm sorry, not Raynor. Uh, Tyke is coming in looking like there was a pretty serious splash damage there. So I don't... I don't know how much longer that's going to last. I'm going to move these guys a little bit forward. Right here. Uh, there we go. That way I can have the Thors in a nice, beautiful line in the back. Targeting up? Yeah, let's get targeting, targeting optics. This will allow our Cyclones to um, stay a little bit further back and get a little bit more damage output. Uh, we're stacked pretty heavily here, actually. Uh, we have Siege Tanks and Hyperion there, lined up. We still have... a massive front line of queens and now raid is coming in uh will the aoe lands because they we weren't really stacked up when the first wave of the aoe landed and it looks like we're able to take out mojo and the raids are still stacked we're, we're on the base <laughs> yes the raids with the victory Alright guys, if you want more episodes just like this, more strategies and other great and beautiful explosions here in Direct Strike Arcade, make sure to hit that subscribe button because we have more videos like this coming up soon. But for now, I'll see you guys later.